The struggle is over, and a second book, It Starts With You. KM believes in inspiring others to build their faith and to live out their individual vision and purpose. Please join me in welcoming KM Johnson Davis to the podium. Thank you, President Thurman. Good morning, trustees, faculty, parents, friends, supporters, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2017. Feel free. Go ahead. Sound excited. This is your day. It's an honor to have been chosen for such a remarkable moment in your lives. For many of you, today marks the commencement of the manifestation of every idea, dream, goal, or vision that you've had thus far. While this is not the first speech I've ever given, I kind of do this for a living, the task of giving you advice as you close this chapter of your life and propel into your new beginning has been, if anything, to say the least, daunting. I have actually been thinking about what should I say to you for the past five months? What profound advice could I give to you that would change your lives forever? Then I realized that there's probably nothing new that I can tell you. Um, but only some things that I might be able to confirm. A few doubts that may have crossed your mind that I may be able to provide some comfort to. And possibly some fears that I might be able to ease. You see, I remember the day that I sat where you sit as a graduate. As a parent. As a family member. And as a friend. And each time, I can't remember what that speaker said. <laughs> but there was this one time. It was about a year ago. It was a graduation that I attended for a local church member. And the speaker was a student speaker, a young man. He stood up and he told his class what they would never become. He told them that they may never drive expensive cars, that they ne may never become millionaires, and that they may never be business owners. But the degree that they had received was the start of something that they knew they would become. After that speech, I was angry. I couldn't understand how this young man could give such a depressing speech on the best day of his life and basically discouraged himself and his classmates from achieving something so great. And then I realized that he could only talk about what he personally had been taught. In other words, he didn't know how to think any differently. And therefore, he could not. He had not yet learned that while everyone may not achieve all of those things that he spoke of, the joy would be in the journey. It isn't always about the destination, but the path that you took to get there. One of the reasons I accepted the invitation to speak today was because the University of the Southwest is Christ-centered. It's a community that's dedicated to developing men and women to a lifetime of servant leadership. I believe that as a Christian, it is important to understand and embrace serving. And in doing so, a world of opportunity is opened up to us. So on today, one of the most memorable and incredible days of your lives, I want to leave you with a few thoughts that I have come to live by. Thoughts that have kept me focused, Thoughts that have kept me motivated along this journey. Thoughts that I believe helped me to grow into the woman that I am today. The first thought that I want to leave you with is 
embrace who you truly are. It wasn't until I began to accept the things about myself and my life that were imperfect that I finally was able to step into the fullness of who I was created to be. With television, movies, magazines, social media, and reality TV, sometimes it's hard to know if you're doing things because you want to do them, because you love them, or if it's because society has told you to love them. I believe it is important to not only have goals and plans for the future, but it is most important to know and understand the person who has set out to accomplish those goals and plans. Know yourself and trust your knowing. When you look for a job, knowing who you are will make that search much easier. It will turn work and a job into a career and a passion. Sometimes we do what we are good at, and then we find ourselves dying inside. Don't just do what you're good at. Do what you were created for. The second thought I'd like to share with you is, live the life you've been given. We all have a vision, a dream, or image in our mind that, of how we see our future selves. Live that life. That is the life that you've been given. I believe that God places these thoughts in our minds as glimpses of our potential. As you work toward it, the journey itself will prove that the process was meaningful. It doesn't matter how silly it may seem either. Sometimes those silly thoughts, they turn into the next best-selling book, the number one box office hit, or something no one would find interesting, I don't know, say an iPhone or Xbox. I mean, who would want one of those? I'm not saying that you are the creator of those next things, but I'm also not telling you that you're not. What I'm saying to you is when you leave here today, I hope that you will leave ready to explore the possibilities, which is the third thought I wanted to share with you today. Some of you will leave today and continue to do what you've always done. And there are those of you who will seize this opportunity for something new until it fizzles out. But there is also a select few of you who will keep at it until something happens, until you make something great of those ideas, those passions and those dreams that you have kept hidden inside of you for so long. I'm talking to you. Explore those dreams. Explore those possibilities. God gave them to you for a reason. Find it. There is no dream, no idea, no goal too big or too small. All that matters is that it's yours. And it was given to you. What you do with it is up to you. And I urge you to explore it. If you choose to give up on those dreams, those ideas, there may be people who are waiting for you that will never have the opportunity to be inspired by you. And you don't want to let them down, do you? I'm not saying that this is an easy task either. Please remember, there will be obstacles. There will be trials. And there will even be times when you will want to curl up in a ball and do nothing. Don't. Don't let the world dictate your comings and your goings. Don't give in to the urge to be mediocre. Don't allow the negative thoughts that enter your mind defeat you. No matter what obstacles you're faced with, remember this day. This is the day, like David, you slay a giant that some may have thought you were incapable of and others may have only dreamt of. This is the day that you successfully concluded one chapter 
of your life, only to begin a new one that is full of possibilities. When you leave here today, I challenge you to embrace who you truly are, live the life you've been given, and explore the possibilities. If you do these three things and continue your journey into becoming the man or woman of purpose that God created you to be, I can almost guarantee that the journey through this thing called life will be one filled with joy, abundance, and happiness. Thank you, graduating class of 2017. It has been my honor to serve you.